Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this exciting video, we're going to take a look at Adobe's new Premiere Rush CC app. So this is something that was announced at Adobe Max this year, and essentially it's a streamlined video editing app. I'm really excited for this because I think this is going to be an incredibly useful tool for creators, but also people who are considering getting into video creation. It's incredibly accessible, available on macOS, Windows, iOS, so your iPhone and your iPad. You can start editing on your laptop. You can then take it over to your phone, carry on editing, and then bring it back to your laptop. So it's incredibly accessible and just opens up content creation to so many new people. So anyway, that's enough of the hype. Let's jump into it and I'm going to give you a tour around this beautifully designed interface and show you just what it can do. So from the welcome screen, I'm going to go up to create new project and click this bright blue button. And you can see I can choose where I want to import my media from, so my photos, my videos, my audio, lots of different locations here. We've got creative cloud files or Dropbox. And we've actually got some sample media here from Adobe as well. So let's just pick a few of these that we'd like to import. And we've got a soundtrack there as well, so we can click that. And down here, let's just give this project a name. <laughs> Fun project, very creative. And as you can see here, we've got sync with Creative Cloud checked. So as I'm working on this, it will sync with the Creative Cloud. And then I can open up Premiere Rush on say my iPhone or my iPad, and it will sync with that and I can carry on editing between devices. So that's pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do now, I've selected all my clips, is go over to this other blue button and click Create. And Premiere Rush will do its thing. And there we go. So welcome to the interface. We have the timeline here that we can scrub through with the blue playhead. And we can use either the trackpad or the scrolly wheel on the mouse to scrub through the timeline horizontally, or we can hold down Alt on the keyboard and do the same scrolling motion to zoom in or out. And I can click this icon here and it will jump back to the previous editing point. In fact, there's a few different controls here. We've got play as well, so we can play the clip by holding spacebar. So if I just scrub through here, oh, that was nice. So we can then come back out. So a few different video controls. We can also make this full screen. So we can preview it full screen and then just collapse that down, which is really nice as well. So let's just zoom back out of our project and we'll scrub back to the beginning. So you can see as I scrub through, the selected clip becomes highlighted and I can of course click on clips and drag to reorder them as I like. I can also hover over the end and make the clip shorter and you can see there where the end of that clip is specifically on the preview, but also it collapses all the clips together. So there's never any gaps between clips, which is really nice and a huge time saver as well. So pretty straightforward stuff. Going up to the top left, we have the blue plus icon where we can add a title or some more media or even record a voiceover if we like. So this is the main button that you will use if you want to add some more media of some kind to your project. Underneath that, we have the box icon which enables us to manage all of our project assets. So these are all the assets that I imported. And of course you can click on the options icon for each one and you get a few different options. And this panel nicely expands and collapses as I like. So now we're gonna move down a little bit. So we've got the split icon here, pair of scissors. So you can see by clicking that it splits the selected clip wherever the playhead is. So I've just split this one clip into three pieces now and I could select one of these and the icon below it is duplicate. So it will duplicate the selected object or I can hit the trash can icon underneath and it will delete that. So I can just delete a few of these clips. Now underneath this, we have the expand audio option. This just expands the audio. So I can now see in a bit more detail the audio underneath, but I don't always need to see that. It's just helpful if I need to see where any peaks are or gaps, etc. So I can just collapse that back down and expand it out as and when I need to. Now below that, we've got the control tracks option. So I can click this and it just brings out a few more options, something very similar to what Premiere Pro has. I can lock a particular audio or video track just so I don't touch it, move it or edit it by mistake. I can mute or unmute an audio track. 
I can actually go and record a voiceover straight from here, or I can just hide and show a video clip. And again, I can expand and collapse these as I need to, depending on the interface that I would like to work with. Okay, so there we go, all pretty straightforward. Now we're gonna move up to the top right. So you can see here, we've got some more panels. We've got titles, transitions, color, audio, and crop and rotate. So if we start with titles, I'll just click on this and it whips out the titles panel. They've got lots of different templates here that I can scroll down through and I can click on one, drag this either to the timeline or onto the preview itself. And it will add this in as a separate object and I can double click on the text here and type some content. So there we go. Click off that to deselect and I can move this around. And similarly, as a piece of footage, I can make this smaller or longer. And you can see as I scrub through it, it pops up and then goes away. So what I can do now is I can actually, with that selected, click on edit and then expand these down and I get all of these different options for editing fonts. So everything you'd expect from character spacing, font size, line spacing, and of course, adding colors, outlines, and shadows. So all good stuff, and then I can just expand that down. So if I don't have an object selected, I will only see the Styles tab, but once I select an object, I then get the Edit tab where I can go and edit that selected object. So that text, it does just instantly pop in. You can see there, and then it pops out. We want something a little bit smoother. So let's go to the Transition panel underneath. They've got a few different ones here. Let's just grab a Cross Dissolve and we'll drag it onto that left edge of our title. And I'll drag one onto the right edge as well. And if I scrub through slowly, you'll see it fades in. Lovely. And I would like this to fade out a little bit slower. So here you can see I've got the clip selected. If I deselect that, I can actually select each of the transitions individually. And similarly, as with titles, I can go up to the transition panel, click on edit, and I get any related options there. So I can adjust the duration here or I can just click on the transition and adjust it manually here. So what's gonna happen when I play the clip now is it's going to fade in very quickly and then fade out a lot slower. Let's give it a look. Cool, okay, so there we go. There's a look at transitions. So next we're gonna move down to color. So this makes color grading and Premiere Rush very, very easy. You can see we have the original image here of the chap and the woman walking along doing a vlog. And we can click on this clip and I can pick lots of different color presets. So that's super, super helpful. I'll just pick this one because I like it. And then I can go to edit and I can fine tune that even more. We have lots of different options. Very similar to what you'd find in Premiere Pro, just a little bit more streamlined. We could add a vignette, for example. And then at the top, I've got this and I can just turn off and preview the original video clip and then preview it with the settings applied. So that's color, super, super useful. Next, we've got audio. So if I go down here and just click on the audio, in fact, I'm gonna expand this audio up and you can see it expands the selected audio and I can actually click on this clip and expand this audio up as well so I can preview this audio in particular and I get lots of advanced controls here. So you can see it detects the type of audio, so it's detected a voice in this where the chap here is speaking. I can change that and I get lots of other options as well. So I can mute the clip, I can adjust the volume, reduce the background noise, the echo, I can enhance the speech, I can preview the left and the right channels individually. So lots of what are typically really powerful audio features but just streamlined into an incredibly simple and easy to use interface. It's like taking some of the most powerful features that are actually quite complex in Premiere Pro and just adding them in here with simple, well-labeled checkboxes that are just really easy for anyone to understand, even if you're not an audio expert, which I'm definitely not. So there's a look at the audios panel. And lastly, we've got the transform panel where we can crop and rotate our footage so we can adjust the position, the rotation, and we can scale it as well. You can see I'm completely ruining this piece of video. But then we've got some advanced options as well. We can crop from a specific direction. 
and also adjust the opacity or the edge feathering. You can see I've totally ruined this video. Fantastic, there should definitely be a video editor. Okay, so let's close this down. And one last thing I'm just going to show you before we look at exporting our terrible project that we've created is this option here. So I can click and drag on this and it adjusts the size of the video preview, but also it cleverly resizes all of this content here. So if I start duplicating some content and spreading it over multiple layers, you can see that this starts to actually fill up quite quickly. So by clicking on this icon and dragging, I can find a balance between the preview size and the timeline size. And you can see, even if I bring it all the way down, it responsively resizes everything on the timeline so I can still see all of my footage. Okay, so now we're done. We want to export this project. Let's go up to share. And you can see lots of popular formats here. We've got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Behance. And a lot of these, I can click on them and sign into my account and publish directly to that platform. Or I can click here and just choose a save location. It tells me the estimated file size, which is pretty useful information to know. And then I've got some more advanced settings. So it's kind of like I said before, it takes what is essentially something incredibly powerful and just gives you all of the settings, the important settings that you would need to know and just simplifies it. Quality, just pick your quality, audio, stereo, mono. And in something like Premiere Pro, you can go so much more in depth than this, but actually for most people doing video editing, this is all you would need to output the video in the size with the frame rate and the quality that you would like. And you can of course preview this over here on the right. You can check multiple formats if you really want to, or we can just save it locally, give it a name up here. And then when you're happy with your video, you can click export. And of course, this is going to take ages to export. So let's just go ahead and cancel that. Yes, we do want to cancel the render because we're doing a tutorial. We don't have time for that. So I can now go and switch back to editing mode and jump back to our project. And one last thing I'm going to show you quickly now is how we can start editing this in Premiere Rush and then open this up in Premiere Pro. So if I go and open up Premiere Pro, and you can see from the welcome screen, I've got the option here, open Premiere Rush project. I can click on this and it will sync my project, my fun project from the Creative Cloud and I can click on this and it will open fun project into Premiere Pro. So you can start editing a project, you can pull everything together in Premiere Rush and then you can open that up in Premiere Pro and then you get access to everything you would normally use if this is the application that you normally use to edit video. And then just go and fine tune it with your effects and all that good stuff that you would normally do. So there we go, there's a look at Adobe's new Premiere Rush app. Incredibly impressed with this, it packs a lot of powerful features and wraps it all up in a really simple, easy to use interface. And if you do have any questions or comments, please do drop them down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.